It was the one. All right, so this one um, I, I love, and I can't do enough of these because they, I always feel very confident that they're going to have a problem that has a lab set up like this. So you get a problem like this, and they have a big table, and I would suggest just quickly cruising through it. Uh, you see the massive uh, potassium iodide tablet and then massive thoroughly dry filter paper. So I have a filter paper, massive filter paper, and a precipitate at their first, second, and third drying. And that's all it says. So I'm going to have to interpret some of these numbers, but I'm not going to have to use this all the time, but I'm going to have to probably refer to it uh, quite a bit. So the student is given the task of determining the I minus content of tablets that contain Ki and an inert water-soluble sugar as a filler. Again, maybe I don't understand what that means. Maybe I do. Basically, it's a tablet that has sugar that's holding some potassium iodide in it. The tablet is dissolved in 50 mils of distilled water and an excess of 0.2 molar uh, lead nitrate. So I have more than I need. Is that a solution? A yellow precipitate forms. Sometimes when I read that, if I see something that they're trying to tell me, it's not a bad idea as you're reading it to underline certain things so you don't have to go back and do that again. Not a huge deal, though. Which is then filtered, washed, and dried. The data from the experiment are shown in the table above. So the precipitate is what's weighed, it sounds like. right? That's what's caught on my filter paper. A lot of us probably can, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but might be able to predict what the uh, precipitate is. We should be able to do that. So let's, let's talk about it. So A, for the chemical reaction that, occur, uh, that occurs when the precipitate forms, I, write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction. Okay, so here are two ways you could go about it. Let me do it the way I think you do it. It looks like Ki reacts with lead nitrate, right? Maybe that's all you need to write. That's all I'm going to write in the beginning. Double replacement, correct? No double replacement reactions usually make a precipitate. That's how we figure it out, right? One's a solid, one isn't. Okay, so if I switch those partners, what's the precipitate? PBI. Specifically, what's the formula? PBI2, and if you look, because that 2 came from that, okay? So... If you're not sensing this, I'm going to quickly write it. I'm going to write it really small. This is a waste of your time, if you, unless if you really want to write it all down, is that these will be ions, right? Uh, alkali metals and nitrates always dissolve. I was not lying to you in the beginning of the year when I said if you memorize alkali metals, right, and nitrates dissolve, are always soluble, you have like 60 to 70% of the knowledge every time. So what's the net ionic equation? It's the ions that change states to the other side. So when you're talking about precipitate, we learned this in the past, it's literally writing the precipitate on the right and writing the ions that it's coming from on the left. Is that fully correct yet? What do I need to do? I need a two, right? So that's just one point, but that is showing the, uh, the net ionic equation for the reaction. So if you did the double replacement reaction, that would not fly. You would not get a point. So that's just one point, and that's all that is. Double I. It says, explain why the reaction is best represented by a net ionic equation. Well, what are those things called that I crossed off? You remember the term? Okay, they're spectator ions. Spectators do nothing. Right? They don't, they don't affect the chemistry. So what the net ionic equation is doing is showing the, you can say the word species or chemicals or atoms. I don't, it, you could probably come up with most any term that are actually involved in the active chemistry or in the chemistry. I'm going to read what they have exactly. But they wrote the net ionic equation shows the formation of the PBI2 from the PB2 plus and the I minus ions omitting the non-reactant species of the K plus and the NO2 minus. Can you install it after PBI2? Again, it doesn't ask for states. If you wanted to, you can. So um, I, I'm not going to write out an answer because I kind of just said it already, but uh, that's how I would write it. I would just say it, it um, only shows the active ions making the precipitate, or um, it doesn't show the spectator ions that are not involved. You could go that direction, right? You could go either way. I could talk about the things I'm crossing out, or I could talk about the things that I'm keeping. Either one works. So that's why we do a net ionic. Net ionic is more descriptive. That's why we didn't do that in first year chem, though, because it wouldn't make as much sense. Like, be like, wait, it's there, but it's not? What? Uh, it doesn't cancel out. 
So that, that takes kind of a, I don't know, a little bit longer for you to really feel better about it. Letter B, explain the purpose of drying and weighing the filter paper with the precipitate three times. We've had this kind of problem before, so I'm hoping that you're seeing that this is not a, um, a specific one-time kind of thing. Um, think about it for 10 seconds. Why would I do that? If you want to start answering it already, you can. It's going to only take a set, uh, one sentence to answer your, your, your letter B. But again, explain the purpose of drying and weighing the filter paper with the precipitate three times. If I weigh it once, after I dry it once, and I'm done, what could be the risk? I could still have water. And what would that mean? It would mean that I think, I'm just going to draw a picture once here. Here's my, my filter paper. Here's my yellow precipitate. That looks like yellow poo. Um, if I weigh it, what I'm saying is the filter paper and the precipitate, if I subtract the filter paper, that's what the precipitate weighs. But if I have, it's supposed to be water droplets. If my yellow poo is sweating, um, and then I weigh it, what am I interpreting? Is that that water is actually the weight of also the precipitate. So I'm making the precipitate heavier, right? Now that, that's just what I'm explaining. I would just say weighing it three times is to ensure that all the water is been driven off or is not present or any direction you want to go with that. Um, I will read. It says the filter paper and the precipitate must be dried several times to ensure that all the water has been driven off. Okay, use that term. Um, I know you could look at that on the third one and go, it still changed. True. But it's I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good about it. And again, that's only one point. All these things are one point in the beginning. OK. Letter C. It says, in the filtrate solution, is K plus greater than, here we go, we got to say one of these, less than or equal to NO3 minus. Justify your answer. OK. So. What I am doing is I am talking, sometimes it helps me um, when I'm doing a problem. You don't have to do it that way. Sometimes it helps me actually write it up. Like I can write little notes under it. Again, the, the point of us doing two practice exams is to get the idea of time. Some of you went right up to it. Some of you went up to it because you were going back to yourself. Some of us went up to it because we haven't reviewed yet. And it's going to be a little easier because you're going to have seen some of this stuff. So what do you need to do? You need to find the source of what these two are. If they don't give you a lot of information, it's usually actually easier. So what have they given us about K? Isn't this the only source of K? And what have they given us? Right here, right? That's the K, right? So that's my information of K plus. Here is my information of NO3 minus, right? So. Couple things with that. What, what's true about the NO3 and that just that equation in general about ratios? Just, just look at the formula. In the PBNO3 too, what does that mean? Does that mean that I have double the NO3 of just that concentration? And what's another very important thing that they told me about PBNO3 too? It's in excess. It means I have much more of the PBNO3 than the Ki, and the NO3 is double mole ratio. So it is the K plus greater than, less than, or equal to the NO3. It will be less than. They're both spectators, though, are they not? So I don't have to worry about them getting consumed. They don't get consumed. So I have excess PBNO3. So the K plus is less than. NO3 because PBNO3, this is what I would have answered, is in excess. I'm not even going to talk about the fact that there's actually a double ratio. You could. You say, and it's a double, uh, there's two moles of NO3 for every one mole, thus making it even more. Therefore, 
I will read what they have, though. K plus is less than, and they use brackets. Uh, brackets are great, and you don't have to say the word concentration. Make sure it's a bracket and not a, a junky looking bracket that looks more like a uh, messed up parentheses, uh, like I did yesterday. K plus is less than NO3 minus because the source of NO3, um, the 2.2 molar PBNO32, was added in here. This one point. I'm going to time. Okay. All right. Keep moving. There's a lot of letters here, but they're all very short. They, they kind of hit as they go. D. A, calculate the number of moles of precipitate that is produced in the experiment. Okay, so here we go. The number of moles of precipitate form. So first, if I want moles, this is the only data they gave me. This is grams, right? So what do I do? How do I find out how much precipitate I have? Let's call this 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we can just talk about it, okay? 5 minus 2, so you're saying take the filter paper and the precipitate and I subtract the filter paper. That makes sense, right? Because then that's all left. Why 5? Because that's the most dry. You probably could take 4, but you can't take 3. So let's take 5 and uh, 2, and I literally write it out. Do not just type that in your calculator. Problems like this, this is showing your work. Now, honestly, if I was starting that way to the left of my paper, it's not why I would just grab that, and I would just make a line. I'm not going to keep this here, and then I would just start a T-chart. But I have to rewrite it because I'm out of space, and now I just go. So if you read that and you're like, well, they're just asking for moles, is that just so geometry? Probably. I mean, it's probably either an ideal gas law, which I'm gases, or it's probably a, a T chart if you're talking about masses. And we gave. We were given numbers in mass. Okay, this is where, if you just have been exposed to it, the point of this, you probably have a good shot at it. E, calculate the mass percent of I minus in the tablet. Of I minus in the tablet. So, what I need to do first is, unfortunately, I do need to figure out how much I I have. So, this is the best way to do this. This is how much PBI2 I have, right? <coughs> so that means that's how much I came out of the tablet, by the way, because the I got all transferred. So I got to find out the I. So this is how I would do this. And I got to speed this up a little bit, so you'll be OK. You don't have to necessarily do it the way I'm doing it, but this is how I would do this. If that's how many moles of I2 I have within this, I would say for every one mole of PBI2, I have two moles of I, right? I mean, that's just like anything else we talked about. So that would just double, right? And then what you could do, and I'm actually going to do this once. If you're out of room, I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep going because it asks for mass. So then this is the mass of one I. And you could say that's a minus. It doesn't really change. And what I get is this. Now, stay with me on this. So hopefully you kind of see that, like, oh, okay, I can see how you kind of did that. Like, it, you just broke it away. For every one of these, I have two of those, and now I'm in Gramol, so I can get the grams. What is a mass percent? What is a percent? It's a part over a whole, right? So this is how much I I have. What's the whole? 0.425, right? That's the tablet. So now I just simply do that. One point is earned for the moles, or basically up here, and then one point is earned for that. So that was the last actual calculation. I want to quickly 
Let's take the last few minutes and do the last couple letters here. We'll see how far we get. It says, in another trial, the student dissolves a tablet in 55 mils of water instead of 50 mils of water. Predict whether the experimentally determined mass percent of I2 will be greater than, less than, or equal to. What will it be? Equal to. Equal to, because all of the I reacted, didn't it? It doesn't matter then. It already dissolved. The, the PB was in excess. So all the I dissolved, and the t we're not changing the size of the tablet or anything like that. Like some of these, you, you can't overthink it. They're just saying, do you understand what's happening? It says the mass percent will be the same um, and added in excess, ensuring that essentially no I remain in the solution. The additional water is removed, leaving the same mass. Like all the water is gone. Like we dried it off still. So it's still just how much I went in. And that's how much I is going to go in. Because the I was the limiting reactant in the first place. So no more I can be added. So and the tablet's still the same, right? Adding water doesn't change the size of the tablet. Okay? Last two. Or it's not. Wait, what am I doing? Nice letter formations. G. A student in another lab also wants to determine the I minus content of KI tablet, but does not have access to PBNO3 too. However, the student does have access to silver nitrate, which reacts with I to produce AGI. The value of KSP for AGI is 8.5 times 7 negative 17. Woo! I. Will the substitution of AGNO3 for PBNO2 result in this, the precipitation of the I minus from solution? Justify your answer. There's two ways you can do this. Will this will this be caused? Will does AG make a precipitate with with I? The answer is yes. Basically, this is what they wrote. The AGI is insoluble, and you can figure that out from its low KSP. So it's gonna yes, like it will AG like when AG bonds with the I, it will also come out of the solution. But you should know that from your solubility rules. Silver and lead with a halogen are insoluble. It won't be yellow anymore. That's okay. So you could still use that. That's all it's saying. It's literally saying, does, does that work? Yeah, it's insoluble. Last part, you guys are doing great. The student only has access to one mole of KI tablet and a, and a balance and can measure to the nearest point zero one grams. Will the student be able to determine the mass of AGI produced to three significant figures? Justify your answer. Yeah, this is not hard. Can they go to three sig figs? They can't because there's not a digit. This is what it's asking. We are going to the thousandth spot, right? And there's no value in the front. So, I mean, the balance is plus or minus 0 0.01. So they're asking, can you go to three sig figs? It's literally saying, like, let me just read it. I, I just find it funny. It says, no, if the mass can be measured to 0 0.01, then the mass of the dry precipitate, which is less than one gram, will be known only to two sig figs, won't it? I mean, if I cover up that amount or anything on here, when I subtract it, um, wherever I go, it's not working here, but even the top right here, it only goes to two sig figs. That's what it's asking. Kind of a weird one. So that's that. I hope to see you all. See you